Hello my beautiful souls and welcome back and welcome if you're new. I hope you're all doing as well as you can and it's a pleasure being here with you guys today. So this is the first part of the Q&A and we had actually filmed everything and then we noticed that the first part with the 26 questions had corrupted for some reason. So we're filming it once again. So. We wanted to edit the video to make it really nice and easy to follow. Uh, we're going to try our very, very best, but I'm really sorry if we can't do it exactly the way we wanted with the questions maybe on the screen, but if we can't do that in time, we'll definitely link all of the questions in the comments below. I just wanted also to say thank you so much for all of your support and encouragement and all of the wonderful, beautiful comments that you've written to me. It really means the world and I really feel like this is just as big of a gift to me as you've said that I am for you so it's very mutual and I really appreciate having the opportunity to tell my story and let that be something that gives someone else something of value. It helps me in my day-to-day -day life knowing that I can do something good with all of the difficult things that happen. And it's nice also to have a challenge to stretch myself and to go out of my comfort zone. <laughs> something happened on Valentine's Day and the challenge sort of just took off and I have you guys to thank for that. So I truly appreciate it and I'm so happy that you're here. So I will just start with the first question, which is actually, why do you call us beautiful souls and what does it mean? So I think I said in the having a bad day video that I, I settled on that introduction because I feel that our soul is our essence. It's what makes us who we are. It holds our personality and our uniqueness. and it carries our challenges and our hurt and our joys and our good memories it's it's everything and i feel that the world is put together of all these wonderful human beings and you all of you here are definitely definitely some of them and um i think that every soul holds a beauty to them so I thought that, that would be a nice way to to start my videos because that's what you are to me so thank you again for being here and how long have you been making videos so I released my first video on New Year's Eve of 2022 because I decided I didn't want to wait <laughs> So I've been at it for a couple of months and I'm really enjoying it. It's not what I thought it would be, it's so much more, so I'm having a really good time. Will you do live streams? Yes. I don't have any concrete plans or, or a date that I'm picturing in my head, but I will definitely do live streams and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you guys directly and communicating you in the moment. That's going to be really nice. How do you pronounce your entire name? <laughs> so we live on the west coast of Norway where the R is hard as in, in French. On, on the east coast it's uh, round, uh, sort of like the, the R that the US have. So um, it would actually be Iron Cecilia Yetram. But you could just say Aaron or Iron if you want. Do you know if your name is derived from Celtic origin or Greek? So I'm not 100% sure, but from what I could gather when I googled it, it seems to be derived from the Greek name Irene, which means peace, and that's also the name of my grandmother. So that feels special too. How old were you when your accident happened? I was 14 and a half years old. I was 
not too many months away from turning 15. And the next question is, how old are you now? So I'm 36 years now. Um, and the next is, do you have any siblings? So I am an only child. And unfortunately, I lost my dad in 1998 when I was 11 years old. So it's just been mostly me and my mom since then. Are your mother and grandparents still alive? So my mom and my maternal grandmother is still alive. Unfortunately, the other grandparents have passed. How is your family dynamics? Um, that's sort of a difficult question to ask because I come from a very small family. We were big when I were when I was young, but there's been a lot of unfortunate fates which left us with only a couple of, of people left and uh, there's been a lot of trauma and, and struggle so between us it's good we have a lot of love and care for each other but each on our own have been through quite a lot so I think it makes us more able to understand what we're all going through and even though it's not always easy. I love them and I'm really thankful for them. Have you ever been to Canada? No, but it was actually a dream of mine when I was younger to study in Vancouver. I saw some pictures and I really fell in love with the architecture and just the nature and surroundings with the ocean and everything. So I really wanted to attend the university there for quite some time so if you live in Canada then please let me know where you would advise me to travel to because I definitely want to try to do that if I ever get the chance to. Uh, where do you live? So I live in a town called Sannes in the western part of Norway. <laughs> Are you an American living in Norway? No, I'm not. I'm a Norwegian living in Norway. <laughs> uh, how did you learn English? Is it usual for Norwegians to be bilingual? And where is that accent from? So my accent is probably just a combination of my Norwegian meeting the US English that I prefer to use. I can use the UK English if I want, if I'm talking to a British person. And it's sort of natural for me to switch if that happens. But it, it's just a mixture of, of how I speak English. So it's not really an accent that's from anywhere. And it's usual for Norwegians to at least be bi bilingual. So we start learning English in third grade, or at least we did when I was smaller. I'm not quite sure if that's the case anymore, but I think it is. And then when we enter high school, we also have to pick a third language. So we have to choose between either, I think it's French, German, or Spanish. So a lot of teenagers and, and some adults are actually able to speak or somewhat speak three languages. How did you meet your husband and how long have you been married? So I met my husband through fellow friends. So my friend at the time, she had a crush on one of his friends. So she wanted me to come along as sort of a wing woman. And since they were fine on their own, I was uh, left to my own devices and I started talking with uh, Steina and I'm really glad that I did because it turned into a relationship that's lasted this January for 19 years and we got married in August 2010 so we've been married this year for 13 years. How has this been for you two together? So it's definitely been quite a journey there's been some really good parts and there's definitely been some struggles and it it really is a challenge when you have a partner that has 
the kind of physical handicap that I have. It requires a lot of care and attention and it takes a lot of time and you get tired and exhausted and a lot of the responsibility is put on you so he has never said it but for me it kind of felt like he was being punished for choosing me and and that also means that I carry a lot of guilt which I know is unfair but I just didn't want for him to have to be the person who took care of me which is why I'm so happy that I got more help as I recently um, explained in another video that they increase the amount of hours I have each week they more than doubled it so this means that he can finally sleep at night because I would wake him several times a night whenever I needed help and I will have more help during the day so that he can have some time off and then he will be sort of the main person for the evenings so that's uh, quite a change from how it's been for 19 years <laughs> um, wondering if you would feel okay doing a video about how and you how you and your lovely husband met I will definitely do that one day and I would like to say that for when I'm up in the chair and, and maybe he and I can do it together it wouldn't be as functional doing that now <laughs> so it's something that I would love to save for us to do as a duo um, you and your husband sound like incredible people thank you is it because of your faith so I think being good people comes down to who we are regardless I he, he is an agnostic I have my faith and it we're different people but we both have qualities that are really appreciated with you know with each other so it, I think it comes down to how we see the world and how we choose to see and meet other people and I think that it's a personality trait what do you and your husband do for any kind of time together besides him being a caregiver so we enjoy spending time watching movies uh, we like to listen to music, we enjoy going to concerts and stand-up comedy shows, we love to go to the cinema, I enjoy going out to eat, he doesn't as much, but I, I'm able to get him to come along sometimes and I really enjoy that quality time together. So we love our movie marathons and we go for the classics like Star Wars and DC and Marvel marathons and it's just something that we do over and over again because we don't really get tired of it. It's um, when it's an interest and a hobby, it's really nice to keep doing the things that you like over and over. Also, we're gamers, so we play together. We like to play games where we can be at least the two of us, if not more. So uh, we like. Um, MMORPGs especially and he he plays a lot of single player games which isn't it isn't as easy for me due to my fine motor skills and not really having more than I don't really have any fingers to play with I use my knuckles so I am I'm what you call a keeper turner which will make sense to some but not all it means that I'm an easy target so usually I play games that are safer where you're not really a sitting duck <laughs> Would you mind showing us all more pictures, videos of your beautiful wedding day? I will make a video in the future of that as well, and it's also one that I would like to do as a duo. And we will show as many pictures as we can, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. It's one of the videos that I have pictured in my mind for a very long time. As I mentioned in my introduction video on this channel, I've wanted to do YouTube for several years. I just 
I just wasn't able to until now, so I'm looking forward to sharing that as well. Um, have you been pregnant and how was it? Uh, and the next question after that is, do you have any kids? So I'll answer those together. So yes, I've been pregnant twice. Unfortunately, they both ended in miscarriages. And the first one was really, it was an emotional trauma because uh, we didn't know that there had been a miscarriage. I had a lot of pain and we noticed that something was different, but we didn't realize what that was. And I continued uh, feeling pregnant and having the symptoms, so uh, the um, pregnancy test still said positive even when we went to the doctor, so no one suspected anything. And it wasn't until I went in for the ultrasound that they told me that the, I guess it's called maybe the pouch or something is still there, but the fetus unfortunately is no longer. And that created a hole in my heart that's been there ever since. But as I've said before, I am incredibly grateful having experienced it either way because I, I still find myself to this day being amazed about what my body can handle having been through what it has and and struggling the way it does uh, with just functioning so I'm thankful that I got to experience it and even though we would love to have kids that might not be in the cards for us but I figured that there are many ways to be a caregiver it's an energy and I have a maternal energy and he has a paternal energy and we have his nephew and we have the kids of our friends whom we love dearly and who we love spending time with and who loves us as we love them and I just feel that I can use that maternal energy to be there for friends and family and loved ones and people who who need it and it's definitely been felt communicating with a lot of you guys when you share your stories of struggles and hardship and either happening to you or someone you love. So thank you for doing that. It's A lot of it is heartbreaking to read, but I still appreciate you sharing it because it allows me to reflect on the things that I'm grateful for and it inspires me to take a deep breath and think that even though this situation that I'm in now, being in bed, has lasted longer than I thought, I'll still take it one day at a time. So thank you for that. And being pregnant was hard and painful and wonderful and beautiful all at the same time. Uh, they talk about morning sickness. I struggle with nausea 24-7 and nothing seemed to ease it. I don't know if it was something that would have passed if the pregnancy would have carried through, but it was it was quite difficult being so nauseous all the time. Uh, I definitely would have made it through because in the end I would have had my baby. And um, I just, appreciate what we still have and I have my fur baby a cat named Thor who's my pride and joy and my furry best friend with his toe beans and jelly beans and pink nose and everything he is uh, on Instagram you can find him through my Instagram uh, he's called Thor the Thundercat he's named after the Norse god Thor though he doesn't have the same bravery he's quite a big but sort of scared cat. He has, he had a, a sort of rough upbringing until we adopted him so we we're trying to be mindful of, of him and his needs and we work really well together him and I so it's nice having a best friend when you're spending a lot of time in bed. My husband is a best friend as well so I have two best friends. <laughs> um, 
uh, so can you have children and if so do you want to would you want to adopt any children so I can have children uh, I was given the all clear in 2016 this was long after my miscarriages and and actually uh, they figured out that the miscarriages were most likely due to the PCOS which I was diagnosed with after they looked into why I had the miscarriages so that stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome and it's a hormone imbalance um, I don't know if it's illness or disease or anything like that but it it reduces the the chance of a successful pregnancy I think down to as little as one one to two percent uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that but it definitely reduces the chance of success so even though it was an explanation it didn't take away the pain from it happening and we have decided not to have biological children I suffered a stroke in December 2021 and after that I struggle a lot with my blood pressure and something called autonome dysreflexia which is characterized by a sudden uh, rise in in blood pressure that's so high it can cause stroke and heart attack um, epileptic uh, seizure and even develop an epilepsy so we've decided not to risk it not not as much for me I would just I don't know how I would even make it if my baby died because something went wrong in that aspect if we tried again so uh, as I said previously we love being sort of bonus parents for the people in our lives that are special to us and getting to use that energy towards you guys as well when you share your stories with me uh, and would you want to adopt any children we've talked about that and we also talked about uh, giving a home and a safe place to a foster child or foster children it's not in the cards for us now, but who knows what the future will bring. And uh, it's definitely a possibility and we've looked into it and it's something that's on our minds and maybe it'll happen in the future. Um, can you keep an animal? Yes. Uh, I can. We have had cats since I was, I don't even remember, uh, maybe 10 years old before the accident. And uh, after the accident, I would have help either from my mom or my assistants when I, when I got those. And uh, my husband does a lot of it, and the assistants that I have today help me. So. We definitely can have animals and they are a source of joy. Um, do you have a therapy pet? Have you considered a service dog? So I don't have a therapy pet that's certified but my baby Thor is definitely therapeutic for me. He noticed when I'm crying that something is wrong and he will make this really cute sound and he will approach me and he will sort of sit down so close to me that my fur <laughs> his fur is in my face and he will lie down and he will put one of his paws on me just to remind me that I'm not alone so he is definitely therapeutic and have you considered a service dog I am not sure if I would qualify for that here in Norway I think that they are primarily uh, trained for paraplegics which have paralyzation in two limbs and have most of their upper body mobility and strength because from what I understand uh, that the service dog is an aid so they can't necessarily 
complete things on their own fully so it's a cooperation between you and the dog and since I can't really help the dog complete or fulfill the tasks I don't think that I would qualify for it I could be mistaken but that's just the impression that I had when I looked into it a couple of years ago it would have been nice though because my husband really wants a dog and uh, it would be nice to to see what that is like because I've never had a dog and they seem like really wonderful wonderful beings uh, will you film your daily life like transfer or stretch yes I will try to see if I can film some of it while I'm in bed but I'm hoping to to be back in my chair as soon as possible that's all I can say really uh, and I will bring you along for everything and I will show you my morning routines and evening routines and how we transfer with the uh, Hoyer lift and sling which you have been so gracious as to explain to me what it was called and um, I will also show you my exercise routine both in bed and in the gym which focuses more on the upper body part so I'm looking forward to that uh, have you thought about writing a book yes for many many years and uh, I struggled for a long time with finding uh, the voice I guess you would call it how I wanted to write the book and in what way I wanted to convey that story and I finally figured that out in January of this year so I have for for a few weeks been actively writing and finished some parts that I'm looking forward to send to a publisher to see if they might be interested and it's a bit scary and also really really exciting What do you like to do most as a hobby? So I enjoy genealogy, getting to know my ancestors as best as I can, seeing as they're not here, and learning that through reading family history books and looking into digital archives and seeing what life was like for them compared to what life is like now and just realizing how lucky I am and how precious life is and it I find it really 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 amazing that because they made the choices they did that I get to be me I am alive today and I find that really interesting I also love cooking and baking I love uh, painting I prefer acrylic and I do some watercolor I like to write poetry and um, I enjoy photography so we're looking into maybe getting a setup that works for my wheelchair that allows me to take pictures without because I don't I can't move my fingers so I can't click on anything if you see that my thumb is moving it's because I'm moving my wrist, but there's no power in my thumb. I don't, I don't have the pressure downwards. Uh, so that'll be interesting, and I'm hoping that that might work. So the phone for now works really well, but it would be nice to advance to a camera. And other things that I enjoy doing is being creative with uh, uh, graphic design and really just finding new things that I didn't know I could do and enjoying that as much as I can. And what are your three favorite movies, books, TV series, and YouTubers? So I love watching Gemma Louise Miles when I feel like I need something to soothe my soul. She is absolutely darling and comfortable and so peaceful to watch. I love watching Brittany Vasseur when I'm looking for inspiration when it comes to cleaning hacks or organizing 
and um, I also enjoy channels like Michaela Noble, Roll with the Coal and Charisma, and Squirmy and Grubs, which is where I look to for inspiration and seeing how their lives work, which is really interesting for me as well because our situations are completely unique, even though we depend upon a lot of the same uh, mobility devices and such. And my favorite three TV series, I think, would be Gilmore Girls and Big Bang Theory and The Office. It's definitely the ones I've seen over and over again the most, so I think they're they're my favorites. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm saying favorites, not necessarily the most magnificent or the most well-made series, but it's it's those that you fall in love with that really makes you feel good watching them because they they speak to you. And my three favorite books. So that's a hard one because I've read a lot and I think that I will definitely say the Harry Potter series, which is a lot of books, it's not just one. And in addition to that, I will say Hyperbole and a Half, which is a autobiography. I can't remember her name, but it's heartwarming. It's hilarious. She has these wonderful cartoons, which is something that I'm wondering about maybe doing in my own book. So something like she has done, but not exactly the same, because I don't, I don't want to feel, I don't want her to feel as if I'm ripping her off. <laughs> but it was just how it made me laugh and how it made me feel and I just truly truly appreciated that and I I really highly recommend that book if you're looking for a really feel-good experience and my three favorite movies so that'll be the Lord of the Rings series the Hobbit series <laughs> and the Harry Potter movie series. Harry Potter is my ultimate no matter what. It is the fantasy land that I got to be a part of when I was first injured. It's the book that my mom read to me when I was trying to find my way back to living after having my life turned upside down. And I remember just fantasizing about having a wand that could fix my spine. So. It was just nice to escape into this alternate reality where the possibilities were endless. So, so they're, they're not three uh, single movies, but they are series that I absolutely love. So that's the questions for this part of the Q&A series. And I thank you for coming along with me. If you have any more questions, keep writing them and I will do more Q&A's in the future. And I do have a series coming up because it's going to be a long video. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here and for taking the time to listen and to learn and spending time with me. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye!